HCTV, Channel 7. This is the Tri-State Area's news leader, Channel 7 Eyewitness News, with Greg Hurst, Roz Abrams, Sam Champion with the exclusive AccuWeather forecast, and the Eyewitness News team. Now, Eyewitness News. The streets are virtual ghost towns as the tri-state area, including the busiest city in the world, is shut down. Victims of one of the most powerful snowstorms of this century. It's the blizzard of 96. Good evening, I'm Greg Hurst. And I'm Roz Abrams. We have extensive coverage of the storm that has brought our area to its knees. We are quite simply buried under snow. It is a storm that we are measuring in feet, not in inches. The blizzard of 96 will be etched in the record books and in our memories. You can hardly make out the cars on streets in New Jersey. Even Santa Claus had a tough time with this particular storm. More than 30 inches of snow fell all across the Garden State. On Long Island, there's an additional problem. We're talking about flooding. Strong winds are causing heavy beach erosion, the worst being 75 feet of sand that eroded from this beach in Babylon. Transportation is simply a mess. The snow has caused an LIRR train to derail in Great Neck this morning. In New Jersey, the New Jersey Turnpike is closed to all traffic except emergency vehicles. But I'm happy to report it is not all gloom and doom. Kids are having a great time playing in the snow in Manhattan and throughout our area. New York City schools were closed today and they will be closed again tomorrow. The same is true for most schools. Our three major airports are closed and won't reopen until tomorrow at the very earliest. Roads are very dangerous. In many cases, you will be ticketed if you try and drive on them. Sam Champion has the latest on where the storm is and what it left behind. Sam. Roz put this storm just barely in third place, if you can believe it, with 20.2 inches of snow. We'll show you all that later in the broadcast. But right now, numbers outside our door are still very cold. So be prepared. Anywhere from 16 to 26 degrees generally. Wind chills are well below these numbers. It's feeling like it's 5 below. It's feeling like it's 12 below. Even Newburgh feels like it's 3 below zero at this hour. And the winds will keep gusting overnight tonight. Satellite picture will show you that clearing line, that clearing edge. And it's nice to see it. That there is one band that's just off to the west. Again, you're going to get one or two scattered flurries back out there, but all of this continues to move as this low moves as well off, off to the offshore. Take these clouds right along with it. Let's look at some snowfall totals, and we'll show you out there that, again, Staten Island at 27.5 inches. Nyack Hartsdale anywhere from 19. Oh, look at that, 22.5 inches of snow. And certainly, as you go on down, Babylon with 27 inches of snow, and Darien, Connecticut with about 25 and a half inches of snow out there. This has been a whopper. So put it in board perspective and it's anywhere from 24 inches plus across a good area here and anywhere from 18 to 24 inches and we'll uh, we'll kind of update you on what's going on we do see another hint of snow not only tomorrow night but probably for the latter part of this week we'll talk about that we'll give you more stats on this storm when we come back Greg Ross all right thank you Sam this is one case where third place in the record books wasn't so bad well if you have any ideas of taking a ride to Hoboken you might as well forget about it the city is closed Police cars block the roads into Hoboken. All unnecessary traffic is being kept out of the city in an effort to clear the streets for snow plowing. The rest of New Jersey is taking less drastic actions to cope with the snow. David Navarro is live in Bergen County with a story there. David? Well, the great dig out is in full swing after a crippling storm delivered a knockout punch to our area. Schools were closed, businesses shut down, mail delivery canceled. All the results of a storm few will ever forget. It took an armada of plows to clear Route 17 in Karlstadt and powerful snow blowers to cut a path in three-foot-high drifts in Washington Township. It's the worst ever. The worst. One time only, I hope. The Garden State Parkway was closed to all non-essential traffic, as was the entire length of the New Jersey Turnpike. Plows cleared main arteries, but exit ramps remain covered. With most businesses closed for the day, residents spent their time on back-breaking work digging themselves out. In Westwood, mailboxes were completely covered, homes left under a thick blanket of snow. I'll be out of here in April. Maybe. Many that ventured out onto the road paid the price. Hospitals, fearful essential personnel would not be able to make it in, appealed to the public for help. At Pascag Valley Hospital, more than 100 motorists with four-wheel drive vehicles helped shuttle nurses and medical staff into the hospital. They sent volunteers out to get us. 
And they came and they found us. <laughs> I was surprised. We heard it on the news that they were looking for volunteers to shuttle people back and forth. And we have a four-wheel drive vehicle, so we figured, you know, we could lend a hand. And the crippling effect of this storm caused the governor to declare a state of emergency, which means many municipalities may be eligible for federal funds to help pay for the cost of snow removal. We're hoping to get some funds, uh, some FEMA funds, and ho hopefully some funds from Bergen County to help us cover the cost of this thing. So far, there have been few reports of any serious damage left after the storm, but all that may change as more information reaches us. We have been told, though, in Edison, the roof of a building collapsed under the weight of all the snow, but fortunately, no one was hurt. Reporting live from Westwood, David Navarro, Channel 7 Eyewitness News, and now with a look at situation in East Brunswick, here's Eddie Arusa. Eddie, what's it look like there? Well, David, let me tell you, as you know, not everyone could close up shop today. Those that respond to life and death emergencies had to be on the job. But a number of hospitals found themselves almost paralyzed, and they were the ones putting out emergency calls. The only way to get rid of the snow from around the Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital today was to haul it away. As crews tried desperately to keep clear access to medical centers all around the area, hospital personnel got there any way they could. I called the nursing department. They told me to call New Brunswick Police Department, and they should get me here. So that's what I did. And that's how you got here? Mm-hmm. A call for four-wheel drive vehicles to help transport hospital employees brought an outpouring of volunteers, and even the National Guard that was put on alert for snow removal was mobilized to help hospitals. We've been ordered to uh, dispatch personnel to pick up nurses and essential personnel to bring them to the hospital. A number of doctors and nurses didn't need transportation. They never made it home. I know people who've been here since last, uh, let's see, Sunday midnight and they've taken some breaks on the floors that we've had arranged. We went through and found every bed. We slept nursing staff here in the emergency department. At EMS command centers, many of the calls today were related to the snow, calls that were all too familiar to rescuers. Uh, it just seems like people just try and get out and uh, get ahead of uh, what's still falling and uh, you know may not be in the best condition to be out there shoveling snow. So uh, that seems to increase our call volume cardiac-wise whenever we have a major snowfall. So the bottom line is, if you're not in shape to get out there and shovel this snow, don't do it. However, some municipalities are asking if there is a fire hydrant in front of your house, please to clear it off with a broom just so that they have access to it in case of an emergency. We are reporting live from East Brunswick, Eddie Arusa, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Yeah, just in case. Thanks, Eddie. Well, the blizzard has proven too much for at least one building in New Jersey. The roof of a state unemployment office in Elizabeth collapsed this morning. Police say it collapsed under the weight of too much snow on the roof. Fortunately, the building was empty because of the storm, so no one was there to be injured. The very best way to get around today is either on foot or in a snow plow. The rest of what's moving is delayed, to say the very least. Very little on the Long Island Railroad is going anywhere. An LIRR train derailed in Great Neck this morning. Crews are still trying to get it back on the tracks. Diana Williams is in the newsroom with the latest on the Long Island Railroad and the rest of the transit picture. Diana. Absolutely, Ross. And for better or worse, that branch of the Long Island Railroad was closed when that train derailed. In fact, there are only three branches on the LIRR that are open right now, and they are the Ronkonkoma, the Babylon, and the Huntington stations. They are offering, though, extremely limited service. All other lines, except for those that you saw there, are closed. As for Metro North, running very sporadically. If you're going to take a train, take a good book with you and be prepared for a lengthy wait. As for New Jersey Transit, they are running on a Saturday schedule, but that's being optimistic. Uh, you can expect delays anywhere from a half hour to two hours system wide. New Jersey Transit, the buses service suspended. Good reason for that. They want the snow plows to get through. That's why you don't have any bus service in New Jersey. As for the subways, the above ground and elevated trains offering only limited service or else they're closed and that's because they've got snow on the tracks. As for underground, those subway trains are typically running but you're going to get delayed service there. As for the buses, no service on MTA buses and again, good reason, they want to get the snow plows through so that they can get those roads cleared. Airports, all of them closed, Newark, LaGuardia, JFK, hoping that they can get those airports open sometime tomorrow, perhaps early tomorrow morning. In New Jersey, the turnpike is officially closed to everyone but emergency personnel. There are 250 snow plows at work and if the police do catch you out on the turnpike or any of the main roads, they say they're going to try and get you off and you could get a ticket. In New Jersey, 
state of emergency continues to exist. At first, we got an update that it was going to continue until 5 a.m. tomorrow. We are now told that that state of emergency in New Jersey will continue until further notice. And again, the state of emergency meals only emergency vehicles are allowed out on the roadways. There is also a state of emergency in New York City, Long Island, Westchester, and Putnam counties. If you don't have to go out, stay home. For the rest of the picture out on the roads, we want to go now to John Del Giorno with Metro Traffic Control. John, fill us in. Diana, we're going to take you right into Midtown Manhattan here, and I'll tell you, today, unless you saw it, you just wouldn't believe it. The snow piles from the front loaders on 6th Avenue were as tall as the marquee in front of Radio City. That'll give you an idea of how much snow is on the ground in Midtown. And because of this, that's why the emergency remains in effect. The streets are officially closed to all but emergency vehicles, and the police department is enforcing this. So if you're thinking about coming into work tomorrow, do not think about bringing your car into the city. It's the same story for the entire state of New Jersey. Diana just told us that the state of emergency remains in effect until further notice. This means that every road in the entire state is technically closed to all but emergency vehicles. This includes the New Jersey Turnpike and the Garden State Parkway. So you'll be thinking mass transit as well as we head out in the morning. Now we deal with the wind. We've got leftover snow blowing around a lot of elevated highways, some bridges. As a result, you've got no access at all to the upper level of the Verrazano Bridge due to the wind and the snow. Speed restrictions in effect as well at the Throgsneck and Whitestone Bridges. For Eyewitness News, I'm John Del Giorno. All right, John, thanks. You're right. Seeing is believing when this storm, with this storm, the way it's involved. Well, Staten Island, perhaps the hardest hit borough in the area, is getting help from the National Guard, and that's where Celeste Ford is live now. Celeste? Greg, everywhere around Staten Island, you'll see this. Snow mounds averaging three to four feet deep at least. You won't see a lot of this, a perfectly cleared sidewalk. The roads are in really bad shape, making transportation a critical issue, especially for people with medical emergencies, also medical personnel who have to get to work. Here at St. Vincent's Medical Center, the National Guard is helping out with Humvees and specially equipped ambulances. At times, Staten Island looked like a big ghost town. Deserted streets rattled by wind so strong, the snow slapped the faces of those willing to venture out. The borough president's office, good afternoon. Yes. The borough president's office oh, took emergency God. calls, most from people in desperate need of transportation. The National Guard is assisting. So for example, a little while ago, we had 10 dialysis patients that I'd get to various dialysis units, hospitals and otherwise. Uh, they have to go by ambulance. Uh, so. Uh, we didn't have many ambulances. Uh, the National Guard was able to furnish us with three ambulances. Most main roads are passable, providing you have a four-wheel drive vehicle, but forget about the side streets. Cars are buried under huge snow drifts or entombed in snow mounds created by plows. You can't even get down your drive without a shovel and a strong back. They, they plow you right out the driveway and everything. There's not much you can do. Mm -hmm. You just have to dig. The Staten Island Ferry is still running, so are the trains and the buses, but with major delays. This Con Edison worker said he had to get to work, no excuses. The ferry to Manhattan and back, and you're walking home how many miles? I think I may have walked about 30 miles today. We're now told that only the S-59 bus line is running on Staten Island. We do have one unfortunate incident to report involving a five-year-old boy in Tottenville. He's in critical condition this evening. He slipped under his father's mini bulldozer while the father tried to clear the snow off a neighbor's driveway, reminding us this stuff can be dangerous. We're live in Staten Island, Celeste Ford, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Celeste. The heart of New York City is beating at the command center in Lower Manhattan. That is where personnel from departments all across the city are keeping things running. And that is also where Lara Spencer is live for us now. Lara. Well, Roz, let me tell you, behind me are the brave, the fearless, the blizzard hotline operators. These are representatives from 20 city agencies. They've been manning the phones around the clock, answering calls, answering questions at a rate of 400 calls an hour. In fact, to date, they've recorded 5,000 calls. Now, this is just one way the city is helping people cope with the storm, but Mayor Giuliani admitted earlier that this storm is costing the city a bundle. There's no question that it will cost the city a lot of money, but uh, we'll find the money to do it. This is not a question of how much money it costs. It's a question of uh, saving as many lives as possible, knowing tragically that you're probably going to lose some to a storm like this, and of getting the city uh, 
passable for emergency purposes. In large part to the weary troops manning the blizzard hotlines, representatives from the Transit Authority, Housing, Con Ed, they're all here to help answer questions as simple as whether or not buses are running or if your school is open, you name it, they're here to help you out. Uh, in fact, one of the men that I've talked to recently says he's been on what he called a 24-hour tour, and he says he knows he'll hear phones ringing in his sleep, that is, when he finally gets to sleep. How many hours is it now? 22, 21. It gets a little fuzzy after a while, but you kind of get a, a second wind and uh, keep going. What number of wind are you on? Probably three or four by now. <laughs> but I guess I'm still better off than being outside, so it, uh, you know, I'll hang in here as long as I have to. Well, the blizzard hotline will be manned throughout the night. If you need to use it, feel free. They say just call 374-2303. Again, let me repeat that, 374-2303. We're about to hear from uh, Mayor Giuliani again. He's getting ready to start a press conference. He'll give us a briefing on the city's strategy to beat this blizzard. We're live downtown at One Police Plaza. Lara Spencer, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. All right, Lara, thanks. From lower Manhattan not to Long Island, where the storm is proving to be a one-two punch, the obvious snow problem and also coastal flooding. Streams have formed in the snow in the streets of Freeport. In addition to street flooding, the strong northeasterly wind is forcing powerful waves to crash on the surf, which is causing beach erosion. N.J. Burkett has more on the effect of the storm and what it's having on Long Island. N.J.? Greg, the snow ended here about 90 minutes ago, but there is still a fierce wind blowing off Long Island Sound, and coastal communities continue to contend with blowing, drifting snow. And you know, it's an awfully good thing a lot of people stayed home today. Cars appeared, then disappeared on the Long Island Expressway. Clouds of snow billowed down the highway as the blizzard intensified in the middle of the night. The storm left huge snow drifts that buried businesses. Abandoned cars were packed in snow. By morning, Suffolk County police officers were patrolling the streets in four-wheel drive trucks provided by the town of Babylon. What happened with the patrol car? Basically, most of them got stopped. Most of them are rear uh, wheel drive. We have chains available for some, but not all of the units. So what they do is they uh, double us up with the Babylon Town officials. You know, they got the four wheel drive vehicles, the fire marshals have them. In Merrick, postal workers were determined to keep the mail moving. They shoveled their trucks into service and hit the roads in spite of the storm. By midday, Long Island's broad network of parkways and highways was desolate and treacherous. Utility crews moved quickly to repair downed power lines. Like most villages, downtown Oyster Bay was virtually deserted, where one of the few places actually open for business was the local video store. Couples arrived in four-wheel drive trucks and didn't find much of a selection. All the new releases behind you, they're all gone. Everything is gone. The people who came in here yesterday and wiped us out. If the video store is like the supermarket, forget it. How about Dr. Zhivago? Oh, that's a nice... That's supposed to be a love story, right? No, that's the... <laughs> that's when he talks to the animals, isn't it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Little, no. no. You know, I'm always getting those doctors confused. <laughs> the only new releases left over, Cinderella and Free Willy. All things considered, Long Island did fairly well. No real flooding to speak of and no power outages either. At the height of this storm, roughly 13,000 homes island-wide were without power. At this hour, happy to say, only 100 homes uh, are without power, and those homes are expected to come back online in the next 24 hours. Live tonight in Bayville, Long Island, N.J. Burke at Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Thank you, N.J. We have much more ahead on the blizzard of 96, some real heroics out there. As people go to great lengths to get through the snow, we've got a live report from Queens. And we'll hit the road with bus drivers. This was a crazy day to be on the job for them. And later, all bets are on. A local car dealer never counted on a blizzard when they made a deal. Now dozens of people could be riding free. Ah, my goodness. But first, a look at the streets that became sidewalks here in Manhattan. 
When the weather is important, you need the most accurate forecast. You need AccuWeather. Only Channel 7 Eyewitness News has AccuWeather plus NexRad Precision Radar with information you can rely on. A dependable forecast, a proven track record, and brought to you by the Tri-State Area's weather expert, Sam Champion, with clear, comprehensive weather. When the forecast counts, count on AccuWeather plus NexRad Precision Radar. Only on Channel 7 Eyewitness News. This time, this time, I'll have more than a pretty face. This time, I'm going to tuck in my shirt. This time, losing weight is within your reach. Because now, Weight Watchers is more personalized. We'll help tailor a plan around your goals, your time, your tastes. This time, I will not deprive myself. You can even choose our new low-fat food plan. This time, this time, I will not be a yo-yo. This time, I'm going to be wanted for my body, not my mind. Because this time, it's your way. This time, it's all the way. Call Weight Watchers now and register free. 1-800-651-6000. It's the ultimate display of power and sail. All the newest power boats, sailboats, and accessories with exciting celebrity appearances and extraordinary special events. The New York National Boat Show, January 6th through the 14th at the Javits Center. At Personal Mortgage Corporation, we're taking our interest rates on a home equity loan to a new low. Our best rate is now just 8%, a half percent lower than the prime rate. And that's not a teaser rate that goes back up in a month or two. The rate stays at a half percent below prime for the life of the loan. And we've got 24 other loan programs, so you'll get the lowest rate you qualify for. PMC has fixed rate loans, too, offering today's great rates for the full term of your loan. Call now. The blizzard of 96 notwithstanding, there were some people who absolutely had to get around and they turned to mass transit and buses. But even that was a rough ride, as Bertha Coombs found out. Sixth Avenue in the village almost looked like a light morning rush hour. Those who were trudging to important jobs were glad to see city buses running. I love my driver, excellent driver, to come out here and work in this snow. He needs a lot of praise. Thank you, driver. Drivers like Mike Egan were glad to be appreciated, but many were surprised to be driving. I expected it, all the buses to go out of service today, so I could stay home, but I guess it didn't happen that way. Is it really slippery out here? Well, you just got to drive slow. The Transit Authority was able to field 40% of its buses in the morning, but by midday, many of them were sidelined. As soon as the snow plows come, in about 30 minutes, 40 minutes, it gets back to the same condition. So basically, it's very hard to travel. By mid-afternoon, there were more buses that were stuck than running. And to get them out would take hours. But Winston Fletcher, who was headed to the garage, it meant the day was ending much the way it began, with him stuck. Um, I caught conked out, and um, someone hit me in the rear. And uh, the same person that hit me dropped me out off to work. Uh, that was about uh, 4 o'clock yesterday. Neither rain nor sleet nor snow will keep them from their appointed rounds. That may be the motto of the post office, but after this storm, city bus drivers certainly have a right to brag about their ability to deliver. On Lower Manhattan, I'm Bertha Coombs, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. So the question becomes, have we seen the last of the heavy snow? Sam Champion is coming up next with the AccuWeather forecast. Also, what's open and what's not, we'll run down a list of the closings coming up next. And then we are going to take you to one of the warmest oh, spots in the nation. This That's is cruel. torture. It is, just in case you forgot what summer is like. Uh, but first, another look at our reality. Left in the snow. And what could be better in the snow than sledding down a slick hill? But 11-year-old Glenn Palilla says there's a certain technique you have to follow. I jump, and I hold it, and I jump on, the, and um, my stomach hits the slide, and I go down. Well, he's the expert on flying saucer going, so here it goes. Sherry Einhorn, News 12, Long Island. Well, ha Sherry should have some fun because she was on in the rough stuff earlier. Yeah, should be a nice club, Ned. Joe's down in the Weather Center now. He's going to tell us just 
how much snow fell across the area, and it's quite a bit, isn't it, Joe? Oh, it's an incredible amount. The third largest snowstorm ever to hit the city since we've been keeping records. Let's check out that map and show you who got what today. Newark, New Jersey, 28 inches, 29 for Elizabeth, 27 and a half, Staten Island, 20.6, officially right here in Central Park. Yonkers, 25. Our friends in New Haven, 16 inches, 26 at... Uh, uh, Bridge Hampton, way out there in Long Island and 29 of Bayshore. An incredible snowstorm. Drifts as high as four feet in some areas. 20 feet at the airports. That's how high the drifts were today. An incredible storm. It will go down in the history books. Of course, we've been tracking the storm all day long since yesterday as well. Bob O'Brien is out now. I believe he's in Paramus. If we go to him live right now and check with him and see how it's going out there, Bob. Well, Joe, uh, businesses like the Suburban Diner here in Paramus have tons and tons of snow to be removed from their parking lots. But those big jobs are being done by men with big machines meant to do it. When people take on the task of removing uh, the snow from their driveways and sidewalks with shovels and snow blowers, the results can be deadly. A tragic example of that happened just a few blocks from here this afternoon. Paramus police rushed to Hemlock Drive when people called to report a man slumped over the steering wheel of his car. Police officer James Sheehan immediately began administering CPR in an attempt to revive 77-year-old Frank Conti, whom neighbors say had just finished clearing snow off his driveway. He was uh, using the snowblower, then he was uh, using the shovel, and he looked, he was in fine spirits, he was fine, and he had finished about, I guess, 15, 20 minutes ago, and he got in the car and took off, and he only lives in a house over here, so I don't know if he went more than 20 yards, and I guess he must have had a heart attack. Vic DeSimone was jogging when he spotted Frank Conti's car plowed into a snowbank with the rear wheel still spinning. So, uh, I looked inside, and then I went and got help. Because I, I didn't know if it was a joke or not, you know? Did you say anything to the man? No, no, I went and got help first, because I thought he might have, you know, I didn't want to wake him up, and we, a few of us opened the door, and, uh, you know, we got him out. He was unconscious? Him. Yeah, yeah, passed out. Paramus Volunteer Ambulance Corps was on the scene within a few minutes, but all attempts to revive Conti failed. He was pronounced dead at Bergen Pines Hospital. Conti, a World War II veteran and Purple Heart recipient, was a widower who lived alone. Police say that his sister, who was visiting him from Manhattan this afternoon, was Frank Conti's lone surviving relative. So use caution if you still have sidewalks or driveways to clear by shovel or even by snowblower, which can be more strenuous than shoveling. We'll have more on the blizzard's effects on the Garden State later in our show. Bob O'Brien, Fox News, back to you. All righty, thank you, Bob. We don't know of any other deaths around here being blamed on the blizzard. There is a woman in Maple Shade, New Jersey, though, who was hurt. She's in the hospital. A snowplow hit her. Rosanna? John, on Long Island, some duck hunters answered the call of the wild. Then the Coast Guard answered their call for help. The men were hunting in Oyster Bay yesterday afternoon. Their boat got stuck in the ice. They had to wait for about seven hours till the Coast Guard could get a helicopter to them. Two of the hunters are New York City cops. Another is a city fireman. They had a dog with them, too. The snow stopped the Long Island Railroad in its tracks. Some trains were running, but not to or from Penn Station. An equipment train derailed in Great Neck. Nobody was hurt, but it set off a chain reaction of delays. Another problem on the Long Island Railroad, a train full of passengers got dizzy and nauseous when their train stopped in the Woodside Tunnel. They got sick breathing smoke and fumes from a diesel locomotive. It was towing another train that got stuck in a snowdrift. We're told all the passengers are breathing easier tonight. In New Jersey, the weight of all the heavy snow and ice on flat roofs flattened a couple of buildings. In Elizabeth, the collapse touched off a fire. The place was closed because of the storm, so nobody was hurt. And Hoboken was one big way street out of town. Police sealed off the entrances to the town, saying you could leave, but not come in. They were having enough trouble clearing the streets without anybody from out of town getting in the way. Okay, John, thanks. Well, we've been adding up the snow totals, and right now around the city, it looks like Staten Island is king of the heap, top of the heap. Mike Sheehan is standing by at the top of the heap in Dungan Hills on Staten Island. What's the view like, Mike? Oh, it's pretty good from here, Rose. Let me tell you, it's definitely top of the heap right in front of the Boardwalk Pub here and across the street from Goodfellas Pizza. I can tell you, on the way out here, the BQE was excellent, and the Verrazano Bridge was fantastic. And all the way out here, I tell you, most of the roads, including like right along here, uh, Mario, if you pan, you see this is Highland Boulevard, all pretty good. It's until you hit the side streets here that are really, really heavily under that you go back under the heap. Below the boulevard, the city needs to 
spend a little more time and bring some more machines down there and take care of business because everyone's paying taxes and it's just not fair. It's just not fair. For years, the people of Staten Island have complained that they live in the forgotten borough, especially when it comes to snow removal. Now, the hardest hit borough in town owns the bragging rights, but most people here are happy this time with sanitation efforts. But on some of the side streets, the only mode of transportation we could see through the deep snow drifts was by snowmobile. It's crazy. I tell you, I live on a dead-end street, and I got four feet of snow on my street. They haven't even been down it yet. You call, you call, you call. They say they're going to come, but nobody comes. You can see, you can look at the streets as it is. We got snowmobiles, we're helping out the neighbors, we're getting, you know, some bread, some milk and stuff and having a good time. We're making the best of what we can make out of it. I think that we should uh, have to speak to Guy Molinari about this and get uh, some more plows from the other boroughs to help us out here. Because if this stuff freezes tonight, what, what's going to happen? Snowmobiling. <laughs> I've been here since Sunday morning, 8 o'clock in the morning. I slept here last night and I'm going to be here until probably Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Well, why is that? Oh, uh, well, my car's buried in the parking lot and uh, there's no relief for me here. I'm the bartender here at the boardwalk. So, so you're stuck indefinitely? I'm here until, <laughs> until somebody comes to get me. Now that's some place to be stuck. Imagine that with John and Rose. I mean, you know, I could live with that, I guess. I don't know. Let me, let me tell you an interesting thing. Sanitation explained to us. This street was just plowed since we're here. And the biggest problem is that the plow can go down. And if this street is a dead end, they're kind of stuck. They can't turn around. That's the way it is out here in Staten Island. But ev everything seems to be going good. The sanitation crews are working around the clock. And the, the people are very upbeat. So reporting live from Staten Island, Mike Sheehan, back to you. All right, Mike, you could live. That's a dream come true for this. It guy. sure is. Stuck in a bar, are you kidding? <laughs> Mike could live with just about anything these days. Anyway, most city schools are closed, and Mayor Giuliani extended the state of emergency through tomorrow. That means drivers need to stay off the road so the sanitation department can clean up. The only vehicles that should come into the city are vehicles that are coming in for a critical purpose, uh, emergencies, uh, health care workers, uniform uh, service uh, workers, uh, people that are involved in law enforcement, people that are involved in critical jobs can come in. All others uh, should stay at home or uh, use public transportation. The mayor toured all five boroughs and had big words of praise for all city workers. And Mayor Giuliani says New Yorkers are famous for pulling together during these tough times. Meanwhile, in New Jersey, Governor Whitman says the state of emergency will remain in effect till 5 tomorrow morning. That means all non-essential vehicles will be banned from the highways. State workers are due back on the job tomorrow. Well, along the Jersey Shore and on Long Island, it's not just the snow and the wind. The blizzard brought high tides and heavy surf. In Davis Park on Fire Island, a bar and a restaurant washed out to see a great old place called the Casino. Suffolk County police tell us they also got word that three houses on Fire Island were also washed away. All right, now let's see how the rest of the island is uh, holding up. Eric Glasser is in Uniondale. What can you tell us there, Eric, about the flooding? Good evening to you, John. Well, as you can see from those pictures, it was a very rough day out here on Long Island. But right now, it is absolutely clear. As you can see over my shoulder, the moon is shining this evening. But not before about two and a half feet of snow fell out here on the island this afternoon. Right now, Long Islanders are faced with the prospect of digging out and as far as cleanup is concerned, well, they've got a long road ahead of them. Lots of islanders spent the better part of their day literally spinning their wheels, going nowhere fast. Dozens of motorists who dared to challenge the elements found themselves in a losing battle, stranded for hours on highway off-ramps. Wind-whipped snow piled up into drifts, some more than 10 feet deep. Snow plows made a killing. At the local hardware store in Freeport, salt was more precious than gold, and at least today, even more scarce. But what has business been like? Yesterday, very good, because we sold out of everything. Near the shoreline, snow concerns were overshadowed by a crashing surf and rising tides. In Freeport and other low-lying areas, the bay breached seawalls, spilling over into the streets. In short, the blizzard of 96 made a mess of Long Island, and the cleanup will take days, if not weeks. But for many, this was a day to worry less about what lay ahead and instead simply stop, look around, and take in what will no doubt be a day to remember. It's just so beautiful out here. Um, looking at the ocean always tends to put things into their proper perspective. You know, it's just so gorgeous. Still a little bit of work out here on the island left for Lilco. We spoke with them this evening. They still got about 190 customers without power as a result of this storm. 
We are live in Uniondale this evening. I'm Eric Glasser, Fox News. Our blanket coverage continues right now with Ed Miller, who is live this evening in Westchester County. Ed? Eric, you know, there's something about seeing a parking meter virtually buried by mountains and mountains of snow in every direction that puts all this in the proper perspective. There is simply way too much snow and nowhere to put it. Westchester County has declared an emergency, a snow emergency, which means you have to move your car from Main Street so they can plow or the car will be towed. But residents are saying they don't know where to put the cars because the snow is blocking everything. Police in New Rochelle and several other northern suburban towns are rushing doctors who need to be on the job to hospitals and patients to treatment. But most other folks here are just now beginning the immense icy challenge of digging out. The challenge for this car's owner may be to try to do without a car until spring. Barbara Taylor has been digging out her car for about six hours. With a, uh, <laughs> uh, oil, uh, a paint pan. A paint pan. <laughs> <laughs> Shovels are usual. They're the usual thing. That yeah, well, I went shopping for the shovel yesterday. It was $22, so I figured, well, I'll save a little money. Metro North, which prides itself on never having to shut down, came close to throwing in the towel. Ice and snow froze switches and other equipment, causing huge delays. At one point today, 12 Metro North trains were all stuck at the same time, stranding passengers on board for hours. Nothing would move for them. They had the mechanical man working on it, and that was it. Just stayed there. A little bit later, we'll tell you about your chances of using Metro North tomorrow. And by the way, watch where you pile that snow. If you are digging out, don't cover fire hydrants. I'm Ed Miller, live in New Rochelle. Back to you. All righty. Thank you, sir. A couple of Amtrak uh, trains never even made it to Westchester, New York. They were snowbound near Germantown in Columbia County, south of Albany, the northern end of the storm. The blizzard has all three major airports shut down, JFK, LaGuardia, and Newark. The main reason, 20-foot high snow drifts on the runways. The snow clouds are out in force, and they hope to get some planes in the air early tomorrow. But in the meantime, 1,800 stranded passengers are camping out in the terminals, and many of them don't seem to mind. Oh, not too bad. Not too terrible. I'm missing a heavy uh, day of work, so it's not too bad. <laughs> well, it could have been worse. We are eight persons. Um, we're having a good time anyway. When somebody else is talking about what a rough time they're having, I can say, hey, look, I survived LaGuardia in 96. That's right. Well, the airports in Boston and Philadelphia are also closed. Well, if you think that's bad, you should see the mess on the roads. Christine McHugh has the Metro Traffic Update. Christine. Okay, Roseanne, you're right about that. The snow emergency declaration is still very much in effect. The roads are a mess. They really haven't been entirely plowed. Crews are working on them all night long tonight, and they're hoping for better conditions tomorrow. But the entire city is still shut down to only emergency vehicles. Once again, that's all. Police are out there enforcing the law. They're actually escorting drivers off the road, issuing citations and impounding vehicles that don't belong on the road for true emergencies. Same deal for Westchester Roads and New Jersey Roads. The Turnpike is closed down still to the public until 5 a.m. Even then, when they reopen it, it will have speed reductions and limited lane openings. There's still an awful lot of snow on the Turnpike. Long Island officials have not reported official ban on the roads, but we do have strongly advised bad situations on the Southern State Parkway. The trains are your way to go t in New York tonight and tomorrow morning. At this point, they're the only way to go. We have several suspensions to get around, most of them being on the elevated lines, which are all very, very icy. We've got problems on the B, D, and F lines and the A line in Queens. The underground trains, they're running in decent shape. LIRR suspensions between Jamaica and Penn Station, so go with the E train tonight night or in the morning. In New Jersey, transit is running with up to two-hour delays. Problems on Amtrak also. Train stuck in New Brunswick holds up the entire Northeast Corridor for inbound trains. And of course, the airports are shut until late tomorrow morning or early afternoon. And in the meantime, keep safe. I'm Christine McHugh, Fox News. All righty. Thanks, Christine. In the meantime, now keep it right where you are. We're going to be with you, by the way, an extra half hour tonight at 11. We will take a close-up look at the radar, roads and rails, everything you need to know. Everything, Rosie. Everything you need to. I can't wait, Sean. To get back to work. Tomorrow. Oh, great. All right, now, all that snow did not make things easier for moms and dads, but the kids sure love it. Mm -hmm. Kids of all ages, Anita need to check things out in Central Park. Plus, it seemed like a great idea at the time, but all the snow means one car dealer has to pay up big time. Penny. 
I'm Penny Crone. You know, when people have big problems and blizzards like this, the fire department and EMS is always there to help them. And we're going to have an exclusive look at a brand new blizzard baby coming up on the 10 o'clock news. Introducing the most comprehensive calling plan in the world. One that will surprise you with its simplicity. AT&T True Reach International Savings. Save on any call, from any phone, any time. Save 25% on every kind of international call. Guaranteed. Even save 25% on calls around the U.S. AT&T True Reach International Savings. Simplicity itself. That's your true choice, AT&T. Here's a hot tip for you. Victor Victoria. A new block of seats just went on sale. Call Ticketmaster today. Yes, hot. When it comes to listening while you work, Light FM is the best radio station in New York. Maybe even the whole planet. 106.7, Light FM. McLean Helios got a great new pizza snack. They call it Pizza Pockets. McLean Helios. Pizza Pockets. The great pizza taste will keep you coming back. McCain Helios. Pizza Pocket. Pizza perfection in a crust that's baked, not fried. So there's no leaks, no mess. Just taste. All taste and nothing but. McCain Helios. Pizza Pocket. Four great pockets, not just two. That's great value in every box. Why aren't you driving a Ford Windstar? Windstar has it all. The most powerful engine of any minivan and over 40 standard safety features. It's one of the safest minivans on the road today. One of the best values, too. Now get a Windstar loaded with features and save $1,350. Five out of the top ten and counting best-selling cars and trucks are at your Tri-State Quality Ford dealer. Kind of makes you wonder. Why aren't you driving a Ford? All right, now, no, I, I know that you're supposed to keep your head covered in this kind of weather, and I know a million moms are going to hate me for this, but I just have to say it. Hats off to the cops and the firefighters and all the emergency medical techs, just for a second anyway, who answer the call when people in our city need life-saving help. Penny was out with the emergency crews tonight, and she will tell you, even though the mail didn't get through today, there was at least one special delivery, right, Penny? Right, absolutely, John. Think about it. You can't even walk. Look at this. I'm trying to cross. I'm on 3rd Avenue. I'm trying to cross to the sidewalk. It's difficult to walk through this. But our firefighters and our EMS workers are out there. They've been out there 24 hours. And as you said, there's a brand new special delivery. Wait till you hear this. It's been a very busy day. <laughs> It's been real tough for emergency service workers, but when the going gets tough, here in New York, the tough always get going. We always run. We run wherever we go. Because so many of the city's side streets are impassable, emergency service workers have 25 Humvees helping them out. It goes without saying, but we'll say it anyway. When a city with 7 million people in it is snowed in, it's serious business. You know, you blocked the fire truck. Did you know that? <laughs> the fire truck can't get through. You can't do that. Oh, I'm just giving people heat. <laughs> yeah, First Avenue is four lanes wide, man. Come on. He is the heat man, so we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Thousands helped one another during the height of the storm. Helping turned what could have been a catastrophe into a solvable problem. These are the men from engine company 294 in Queens. The guys, along with Jamaica hospital medic Jerry Acabito, braved the blizzard, walked down a snowed-in block, and delivered a baby boy. Our cameras were there when Captain Rich Rotans and his men came to see how baby Michael Philip Stewart was doing. You didn't have that much hair. We did such no, a great good. job. No, 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 Mom, no. you did. No, you did. You're the hero there. Without you guys, I couldn't have done it. I heard when they asked to see, t they asked you to take a look at the baby, you were a little nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah just was. a little. Yeah, <laughs> I was, they was doing most of the work. So. You got me chasing rabbits, walking on my hands, barking at the bar. Now, 
believe you're celebrating, right? We're celebrating life this morning. Brand new life. Delivered by engine 294 and EMS together. Now, see, there you go. There's a silver lining on every snowdrift or every cloud. That was very good news for everyone. And we all have to thank our firefighters and our EMS workers and everyone who's putting in 24 hours a day just to help New Yorkers. Reporting live from Manhattan, I'm Penny Crone, Fox News. Now back to you, Rosanna and John. All right, thanks, Penny. They are amazing. By the way, Michael Stewart, the proud new daddy from Penny's Report, he was born in the backseat of a cab in Brooklyn 22 years ago. Rosanna, you were born in Brooklyn. Right? I was born in Brooklyn, but not in the backseat of a cab, John. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, the blizzard sure didn't clip the stork's wings. 18 babies were born at New York Hospital since 5 a.m. yesterday. That includes a set of triplets and a set of twins. The birth rate was up slightly, though doctors aren't really linking that to the storm. Still, it made giving birth quite a labor for one mother. She had to take two trains, a bus, and walk just to get to the hospital. Well, you've heard of cross-country skiing. How about some cross-town skiing? The snow bunnies were gliding along Fifth Avenue right outside Central Park. After all, who needs Vail or Aspen when you can resort to Manhattan? <laughs> well, if you went to Central Park today, it really was like going to the Winter Olympics. Ski jump near the museum, luging across the Great Lawn, hockey and woman rink, <laughs> cross-country in the Sheep Meadow. Anita Padilla was there for all the fun and games. The snow blankets Central Park like a fluffy down comforter, except it's not as warm as one. If you ask those with a camera, it was a perfect picture-taking day. There's some beautiful things out here. You know, the bridges with the snow covered. It's a gorgeous day out. <laughs> Everywhere you turned in the park, there were the dogs jumping right into the white powdery stuff and loving it. In fact, the snow was so deep, cross-country skiers couldn't make use of it. Instead, they glided along the paved parkway to get around. It's absolutely the best way to go. Those that want to work are going in this morning. Die hard. Die hard. Well, he seemed to be the only one heading to work. Everyone else in the park was having fun, especially adults. We found a lot of them playing hooky and enjoying it. Adults like to have fun just like children do. <laughs> <laughs> we remember all those great snow holidays of way back when. <laughs> now, what about work today? What work? We're playing in the snow. <laughs> well, I didn't get the day off today, but heck, this looked like a lot of fun anyway, so I decided I'll take a ride with these two kids. Go ahead. Oh, God. Oh, Yay. Lord. Oh, Lord. Ah! Now, I haven't done that in years, but honestly, it was a blast. But I'm not the only one having a blast. Check out this family. It seems Dad has his daughter pulling him on the sled. Don't we have it a little backwards? Aren't the adults supposed to pull the kids? Who says? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. This is great. One of them takes a picture, one of them pulls, and then when one gets tired, the other one can take over. His. You gotta hand it to him. He's got the right idea. Anita Padilla, Fox News. Yeah, Anita gets all the tough assignments. Maybe we'll have her, uh, maybe the Polar Bear Club at Coney Island tomorrow the skating rink at Rockefeller Center. I don't know, one or the other. Rosanna, what do you think? Uh, that sounds good to me. I'll have to remember that sledding routine for tomorrow. Anyway, all that snow made for some rough sledding in Rockland County. They got up to two feet there. But it wasn't all child's play. Clearing the roads was hard work. Most people took the big chill in stride. They said there's no point in getting hot under the collar. We do three shopping centers, pretty big ones, and there we have loaders and tandem max and bump trucks, and we can't keep up. The uh, cars stuck everywhere. I saw more police cars getting towed last night than anything else. Hey, we need to slow in Minnesota. Come on, my house. If you say so. Rockland County schools were closed today, and they won't be open again tomorrow either. Find out where the guy bought that hat. <laughs> Hopefully that place is closed today. It's the same place where you bought that sweater. You know, I, oh, thank you very much. You know, I, I can't believe that, you know, whatever happened to gloom and doom and snow and the mail gets through? Hey, but you know who did get through today? The pizza guy. You stick around, we'll show you how life goes on in the big city. And if you got to be snowed in, we can think of worse places in the Big Apple. That's up next on the 10 o'clock news. I do like your sweater. It's too late. <laughs> Because they try beating you out before you plow them in. That's like a war out here. Yeah, it's a war, but we're going to win it. Mother Nature thought she was the enemy, she was going to win, but we got to live. This is just the first round in this battle by sanitation workers like Richie Wilson as they brace for the threat of even more snow just down the road. On the west side, I'm Glenn Thompson, Channel 11, News at 10.
Yeah. Really should be commended. What a tough, tough job they had. That and snow just kept on coming. A lot stop. more work ahead through the night. They're going to be out there. We have a lot of other news to tell you about tonight. The verdict is in in the case of the man charged with stalking Madonna. The Supreme Court has ruled on the appeal of Mike Tyson's rape conviction. And we may be shivering. Eight News Channel. And now, Chuck Scarborough, Sue Simmons, Janice Huff, and Len Berman. This is News Channel 4 at 11. The blizzard of 96 dumps nearly two feet of snow on our area. There is no way to get to work or to school. Lives are turned upside down. Now the storm of the century is moving out to sea, and the digging out has begun. Good evening, I'm Carol Jenkins. Tonight, the recovery begins from a record-setting storm. Well, the fury of the blizzard of 96 is dying down now. It is all over except for the digging out. And here's a look at some of what the storm left in its wake. Times Square usually belongs to impatient cabbies, but tonight it is so deserted people can walk down the middle of the street. Elizabeth, New Jersey, the caved-in rooftop of the State Un Unemployment Insurance Office. It could have been a tragedy, but the office was closed because of the snow. On the Long Island Railroad, a train with no passengers jumped the track in Great Neck. The few workers inside were not hurt. We have team coverage beginning with meteorologist Janice Huff. Janice? Thanks, Chuck. The blizzard of 96 is still winding down across New England tonight. All the snow has moved out of our area, but they're still snowing around Boston and up towards Portland, Maine. And they're actually getting, they've got about 25 inches of snow on the ground in Portland, Maine, and some of that from this storm. So it's all moved away from us, and now we're going to get drier conditions tonight and cold temperatures. But the storm left its mark across the area, two to three feet in many locations, from Staten Island back to central New Jersey. Here in the city, uh, one to two feet of snow and drifts up to five feet. It goes down in the record books as being the third largest snowstorm in history for this area. The only two other storms that were larger, the blizzard of 1888, 21 inches. We came close to getting above that and 26.4, the all-time snow record of December of 1947. We had 26 uh, and a half inches across the area. What's going to happen next? Well, another storm may be developing later on this week. I'll have the details on that. First, I'll let you know how cold it's going to get later on tonight. We'll see some areas down into the single digits. I'll be back with more later. Carol? Thank you, Janice. Well, tonight the sanitation trucks are out in force trying to dig the city out from under all of this snow. It's been a pitched battle since the early morning hours when the powerful plows could really rip down the avenues. News Channel 4's Tiwa Chang is live now at the city command post where they've been coordinating the battle all day and into the night. Tiwa. Well, Carol, we're here at the uh, command center police headquarters in lower Manhattan. And just about an hour ago, the mayor and the uh, sanitation commissioner were here and they announced that the state of emergency in New York City will continue into tomorrow. That means no driving to the city unless you have emergency vehicles, obviously uh, sanitation, plows, uh, police, fire, health department, also trucks making food deliveries, etc. Schools will also be closed tomorrow for a record second day in a row. One million kids will be at home. Despite 1,400 sanitation trucks plowing around the clock, uh, basically this two to two and a half foot uh, snowfall we've had has crippled much of New York City. The streets of lower Manhattan during evening rush hour and 7th Avenue near Times Square at rush hour. Two feet of snow has crippled the city and either emptied or turned the streets into pedestrian walkways. Tracy Gallagher left work in Midtown and began walking home to Brooklyn. I found since yesterday that the snow brings out something really nice in people. People are friendlier in New York than I've lived here for almost 10 years. It's the friendliest I've ever seen anybody. At the Port Authority bus terminal amidst other stranded passengers, Robert Queen of Rockland County has waited for more than 24 hours for a bus home to Spring Valley. Eating, uh, using the ATM card. Manhattan's main streets appeared plowed, though icy, as did most of its side streets. Other boroughs were in worse shape, though. In Staten Island, some main roads were plowed, but the side streets appeared untouched and too much for hand-powered shovel. As the city dug itself out, the big question is, what about the morning rush hour? Bronx got 30 inches of snow, which is a record for New York City. Chief Tony uh, Punzi of the Bronx got the Bronx cleaned out today. There'll be no driving into the city tomorrow because the state of emergency will continue to be in effect. As for buses, the New York City Transit Authority says there'll be full bus service restored by 5 a.m., they hope. And the subways, which have been the best form of transportation so far, in the morning they should be back to normal, maybe. There have been problems with the F, B, D, and N north of Stillwell Avenue in Brooklyn. And also the number seven has had no service from Queensborough Plaza to Times Square. Mayor Giuliani has urged everyone coming into the city tomorrow to use the subways to know exactly what's running tomorrow morning. Watch News Channel 4 at 5 a.m. for a special report. By the way, alternate side street of the parking will be uh, suspended. A final note, 
Mayor Giuliani and Sanitation Commissioner John Doherty both said that all the streets in New York City, including the side streets and all the boroughs, should be plowed by Wednesday morning. And the mayor said the city will be back to normal by Wednesday and Thursday at the latest. Now, for the latest on the commuter rail lines, let's go to my colleague Linda Laverne, who's in Hicksville, Long Island. Linda? Tiwa, right now, here's an update for tomorrow morning's rush hour commute on both the bus and rail lines. First of all, Long Island Railroad, there is no service out of Penn Station into Jamaica. However, the Long Island Railroad is offering free transfers between those two points on the E subway line. Service will be on a Sunday schedule. It's approximately one train an hour on the Babylon, Port Jefferson, and Ronkonkoma branches only. From Metro North, there will be local service only on trains running every hour or so on all three lines, Harlem, Hudson, and New Haven. Over in New Jersey, the rail lines will be on a Saturday schedule, and that will be including the Pascack Valley and Boonton lines. For bus service, they say they're going to be operating on a regular weekday schedule. We'll see how they do with the roads out there. However, there is a note to that. There will be six lines running on a Saturday schedule. Those lines are the 154, 156, 158, 159, 321, and 128. And what that means is that tomorrow, commuters will have a difficult time once again. The trains arrived only sporadically on the Long Island Railroad, and when they did, they came mostly empty. It seems most people heeded the warning to stay at home during this blizzard of 96. Those who had to work tackled lengthy delays. It's been crazy. I spent seven hours here last night waiting for a train, and finally I got the next train going east and took me back to my hometown. I stayed there, and I'm going to try again to go to Central Islip. Service was eventually limited to three lines running diesel trains, no electricity. The Babylon, Port Jefferson, and Ronkonkoma branches. Service was cut off from Penn Station into Jamaica. I'm just lucky that I'm in Hicksville and my train happens to be working. I mean, this is one of three, I think, that are left actually running. So I'm lucky that I can get anywhere. But commuters traveling by surface had a more difficult journey. They have to conquer the compacted snow, which is quickly turning to ice. That made traveling by bus slow and dangerous. Snowplows tried to help by clearing some roads, but they're no match for the pounding we received from Mother Nature. So for those of you, uh, although the blizzard is over, for those of you traveling tomorrow morning during the rush hour, it'll, it will still mean only very limited service. Reporting live in Hicksville, Long Island, I'm Linda Laverne. Back to you. Linda, thank you. Now here is the latest on the airports. Kennedy could be open by noon tomorrow. LaGuardia a little bit later in the day. And crews are scrambling to clean up Newark Airport because it is scheduled to open somewhere around noon as well. Some runways still have snowdrifts as high as 20 feet. Port Authority officials say they hope that by early afternoon, all three local airports will be open for takeoffs and landings. Well, the end of the storm means the end of the state of emergency in New Jersey at 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. Traffic that had been banned on New Jersey roads will resume. Many New Jersey towns are struggling to return to normal, and New Jersey reporter Sue Keenan is in Belmar. Sue. Carol, all along the Jersey shore, the water behind me posed the greatest danger, threatening to flood the entire oceanfront area. Well, flooding was minimal, and as you can see, the water behind me is tranquil now. Environmentalists believe the severe shifting of the sands by the high winds may have caused the greatest damage, damage that won't be clear until the snow is gone. That's not likely to happen anytime soon. Along the Jersey Shore, volunteer firefighters race to a different kind of emergency. Hydrants buried in drifts several feet high. They are racing to avoid a tragedy. Concern just is if we have any fires at night, we'll, we'll be able to locate the hydrants, so we have to go out and dig them out. Other priority calls here, heart attacks. Rescue workers say are often caused by the kind of physical stress heavy drifts like these can cause. <laughs> the heavy winds that piled the snow high here have now subsided. The residents evacuated 24 hours ago under the threat of coastal flooding have returned. We got kind of lucky. The wind shifted around right before the high tide. But cabin fever has infected these resort residents in a big way. We came uptown because we were tired of staying in the house. Mother Nature has blessed upon us a four-day weekend, and we we're taking full advantage of it. Police fear all the hijinks may interfere with important work. It's a little bit of a carnival atmosphere, you know, I mean, this much snow, but uh, we, have to, we have to try to keep a reality base. Uh, here. We do have a, a public safety function we have to provide for, and, part, and that means we have to plow the streets and keep them clear. So if, if people could stay home, I'd really appreciate it. 
Well, following orders which remain in effect to stay off the roads, preferably indoors, are awfully hard for beach residents, unless, of course, it is a below-freezing night. Like tonight, it is very quiet out here at this hour. Now, local emergency management officials want residents along the shore to know that if they believe they have a fire hydrant on their block that is buried, to call the local fire department, they will come and dig it out. They also want residents who have dug out their cars to make sure they are parked off the road so that plowing can continue. And as for residents who want help digging out those cars, we're told to pass on the word, you're on your own. Reporting live from the Jersey Shore, Sue Keenan, News Channel 4. Thank you, Sue, very much. And we want to remind you that school will be closed tomorrow in New York City, and I would guess everywhere else in the metropolitan area, one more snow day to uh, find your, something to do with your kids. We will be back with more news in just a minute after these important phone numbers. Stay with News Channel 4 for continuing coverage of Blizzard 96. If you need help, following are the help hotline numbers for the tri-state region. For any life-threatening situation, call 911. Need emergency shelter in New York City? Phone the Red Cross at 212-787-1000. If you're in New York City and have no heat, call 212-960-4800. And for power outages, call your local utility company. For airport information, JFK at 718-244-4444. LaGuardia at 718-533-3400. Or Newark at 201-961. 6,000. Some commuter railways are running, but delays should be expected. Call the LIRR at 516 -8